There's coffee. Nice in here. Figured if you uh, hadn't heard before the little story about how I got this uh, got this truck, figured I'd talk a little bit about it. Uh, if that's something you're interested in. There you go. Not really good on uh, exact years or anything, but I know I've had this truck for a few years anyway. Um, you know, not too long, maybe. I think about three years I've had it now. I don't know, lose track of time, but... Um, years ago, there was a kid in town... Um, he had some old hot rods and stuff. He had an old Nova, stuff like that. And uh, he always kind of had cool stuff. But, um, you know, kind of one of those houses you'd cruise by, you know, give him a little whap of the exhaust and let him know you're there anyway. Um, and one day I seen that he had a uh, 1980. I could tell right away by that distinctive nose. It's kind of weird uh, to see it, but this truck was sitting in his yard and it kind of looked like uh, you know, an old man's truck had the old the wacky mirrors that came out here, out the fenders and um, had some brackets and stuff on the back for the, for the camper. Probably had a camper on its back at, you know, most of its life, but um, I was like, man, that's a cool truck, and, you know, when I first started making, um, YouTube videos, one of my first videos is me scrapping my 78 Camper Special Dually regular cab two-wheel drive, big block, it's bright yellow, had it for many years, uh, made a lot of money with it, towing junk cars, the truck was well known all around the area, um, but we were rich with cars and trucks coming in, you know, doing a deal every week, you know, always doing something, trading, buying something. So there was always something new. Um, anyway, I thought, well, man, you know, as years went on, it was harder and harder to get these trucks, especially in one piece and not all rotted out. And, uh, didn't think I'd ever get one again. So, fast forward years and years, a lot of different trucks that I had, many, many trucks. And then I see this thing, and I want it. But, he actually, from Massachusetts, drove all the way up to Maine somewhere up here, which is kind of weird. And this truck was sitting in this old timer's yard and the story he gave me is they told him that oh yeah you can fire it up and you know drive it right home but um, when he got up there it was uh, far from you know getting in and driving it so not wanting to pay for a tow or to haul it or anything like that you know he needed to get it going so uh, he said it was a nightmare. I mean, he's a mechanic, you know, and stuff. So, I mean, he's a, you know, he knows what he's doing. And uh, had to do a lot of things uh, as far as the fuel system went. There was a lot of, there was leaky fuel lines and it wasn't getting fuel. And the tank was all gummed up and plugged up. He ended up dropping the tank out of it, um, doing a bunch of stuff to the fuel lines. Um... I don't remember exactly everything, but there was a lot of stuff that he had to do anyway. But, you know, it did, you know, eventually fire up, run pretty good. Um, as far as the ride home, there was a couple of breakdowns. Um, but he made it back, and his main goal with the truck is he's a, like a circle track, uh, you know, race car guy and that's what him and his girlfriend did so uh, he was really into that and um, so basically why wouldn't you want a cool 1980 dually to tow your uh, 
your, you know, vintage, um, you know, stock car to the track. I mean, that's what you want. So he got a car trailer and he started using this, but, um, he only kind of used it just for that, you know, like on the weekends he would tow the race car and, you know, it sat there in the yard a couple, at least a couple of winters, I think. Um, and I always said to him, man, you know, I got to get that truck. He said, no, I'm never getting rid of it. You know, his truck is what I wanted and, you know, I'll keep it. Basically, I'm in love with it. So, um, anyway, one day came and he got a hold of me somehow, I forget, and said, you know, hey, now's your chance. You want that truck still? And I'm like, yeah, I want it. And he said, well... I'm moving to Tennessee, and uh, I got a Suburban, square body Suburban, three quarter ton, I can fit all my stuff in there, all my tools, it's, you know, my dogs and stuff like that, and um, tow the trailer with it, and it just makes more sense than, you know, a regular cab, big block that, you know, basically go broke driving the thing you know that far on fuel so um he made the decision to let it go and he was giving me first shot at it but of course things come at the worst times i at that time with the you know hustling cars and doing whatnot you know i didn't have the money he wanted like five grand for the thing which you know is not a lot of money for this truck um now you know a few years later you can't touch these trucks for that much money, so you'd be hard pressed to find a truck like this for five grand. But anyway, that's what he wanted, and uh, I couldn't swing it, couldn't make it happen. So that was that, and the truck disappeared, and I don't know what happened to it. You know, um, he moved, and uh, so then years go by. And I'm talking years go by. A couple of people tell me, you know, that they seen the truck different places. Around Rhode Island and, you know, I think maybe Connecticut, I don't know. But the truck was seen different places. And, like, man, that's kind of weird. So, um, it popped up online one time. He never got any response to the Craigslist ad, so I didn't even know who had it or where it was. There was no location. There was nothing. Um, so that was a dead end. But I figured it was a goner. You know, I kind of forgot about it, doing other stuff. You know, other trucks, other cars. And then one day someone tells me, you know, hey, uh, they sent me a link to uh, a Craigslist ad, and there it is. And the guy's got it in Rhode Island, so he wanted, I think, four, right around 4000 for it. Um, so... I forget, I had something at the time, something I was trying to trade or sell on eBay, I don't remember, it's a, there's so many cars and stuff that it's just a blur to me, um, you know, I'm sure if, uh, my old buddies were here, they would, you know, chime in and know what I'm talking about, and they would probably have some answers, but, it was something that I was trying to trade or sell, and I offered it to him, plus some cash, and he didn't really bite. He kind of wanted to look at it. Um, probably an old Cadillac, something like that, had a lot of them, but uh, I think it was, now, now that I remember, I think it was an old Caddy of some sort. And um, so we talked back and forth, and then, you know, it kind of, um, nothing really locked in, and, uh, it wasn't really feeling the whole thing, but, uh, 
I ended up going once a month, pretty much, me and Crazy Tony, that's right, we would meet up and one of his whatever wacky vehicles he had, we would take it. Um, sometimes we had to take mine if his was down, but uh, we would go and we would get ribs, barbecue somewhere, you know, a couple beers, and uh, it was just kind of something we did. It was cool, and um, there was a, uh, a new Texas Roadhouse barbecue um, went in over in Rhode Island, and you know, it wasn't too bad of a ride, it was kind of the closest one, so, um, that's where, anyway, we took off to go one day, and, um, when we were coming out of the back end of the parking lot, there was, uh, was a main, you know, kind of a busy road, and, uh, there was some houses and stuff, um, and I could have swore I seen the nose of this truck, on the side yard, and uh, we we're on a one, you know, a one way um, side of the highway. There's no easy way to turn around. You would have to go way ahead. But um, anyway, we were full of barbecue and and everything, and just you know, Tony just wanted to uh, hit the road. But um, I kind of remembered where that was, so I think it was a couple of days later. I took a ride myself. And uh, I went over there, and sure enough, there it was sitting there in the yard. Um, tires were low, you know, you could tell the thing, you know, it had a lot of tree shit on it, on the windows and stuff, and um, it was even a little bit of snow, because um, it was, it was, I think, the start of the winter, um, or maybe the ass end of it. I'm not really sure. But anyway, there was some snow, and uh, I didn't want to really go, you know, start traipsing around somebody's yard. There was nobody home at the house. No other vehicles. There was, but they were, you know, dead vehicles. But um, nothing that was like a somebody was driving. But so <clears throat> that was it. I had to just go home and leave it sitting there. And uh, I went back, way back in my emails or something, messages, and somehow I found where I was talking to this guy. And then uh, I found an old Craigslist ad that was still active for it. So I ended up contacting him. I said, hey, what's going on? You know, that truck's still sitting there. What are you doing? Oh, he said, oh, I need, you know, oh, I, could, I could use money right now, but... You know, I'm not going to give the thing away. I'd rather leave it sitting there. Can't blame him for that. But, um... Long story short, you know, we talked back and forth, and, uh... I ended up... The car... In fact, I think it was... I think it was that... I think it was the Cadillac with the airbags must have been um, the guy that originally owned that car came back and bought it um, and I think that's what I was offering to trade and he said man you still got that caddy and I said nope just sold it I mean within weeks I sold it and he said oh shit he said I really I thought about it after I really wanted to do a trade for that he said, I really wanted that car, but I couldn't find your contact information. You know, I had no way to get a hold of you anyway. And I was like, well, that sucks, but the car's gone, you know. No way you're prying it out of that guy's hands. He got it back with all the problems fixed. But, um, so it just happened to be I had some cash. I had actually just bought the 78 Broken Dreams farm truck that I have now, I I had just purchased that truck uh, for um, fifteen hundred. I paid up on that thing, basically a jalopy with a brand new engine. But anyway, um, I had just bought that because I wanted. I had no square body at the time other than the Suburban. Uh, I wanted a square body truck, and they're getting hard to find. So 
I bought that, and then that's when I discovered that this thing was up for grabs, and he ended up, you know, he wanted like four grand, and then, you know, like 35, and then, you know, basically, you know, what's it going to take to get this thing out of there, and he said, well, I wouldn't mind not seeing it sit in my yard and rot, because he was using it as a daily driver, um, he was a chef, I didn't know too much about cars, but a little bit, he liked to mess around with stuff, um, so, he drove it for a while, like I said, every day to work, and, uh, he ended up getting some other cars, like a Buick Century, you know, regular front wheel drive, shitbox type thing, just to drive and park this on the side, but he said, you know, I wouldn't mind the cash, and, uh, any, any less than three grand, and, and she can just sit there in the grass and rot. Pro, as far as I'm concerned, and I said, well, okay, let me go down there, so met up with them, we threw a battery in it, fired it up, and, uh, that was basically it, I just threw the money at them, and, uh, I said, yeah, I'm taking this, he said, you're taking it now, you're gonna drive it, yeah, I don't care, and the thing's been sitting there, I'm driving it home, that's it, so, it was a good sized snowbank in front of it. Um, no problem. Got it out of there. Um, went down to the nearest gas station, of course, had nothing in it. Pumped it full of gas, and from there on, it was a dream. Uh, not much. Didn't really have to do much to the truck, you know, uh, other than chase like a bunch of light bulbs and stuff just were out, you know, the cab lights weren't working, and, you know, just chasing bulbs and, and a little bit of wiring here and there on some of the sockets, uh, little stuff like that, um, basically it was just, I just jumped in it and started driving it, um, the weird thing was, is, uh, you know, you, you know that this thing had a trailer hitch on it at some point, but, um, the hitch was gone, somebody took the hitch right off of it. So I got a brand new class 3 hitch for it, put that on, got all the plug on there for get it ready for towing the trailer and stuff. And uh, Since then, it's, uh, you know, it's not good in the snow. Um, I don't usually, I didn't drive it the first couple of winters. Um, plus it's... Uh, pretty rust free, you know, there's a couple of spots, but it's pretty solid, clean underneath, the, uh, the old guy that had it before, he did the undercoating on it every season, you know, with the old oil and diesel spray and stuff, so, kept it pretty nice, um, I can't really think, there's nothing really major that I've done to it, uh, since I've had it, uh, Master Master cylinder went in it, you know, um, that was like $24, I think, uh, you know, for that, um, of course, you know, carburetor, uh, I did have a, um, yeah, it had an Edelbrock on it when I got it, but it was, uh, pretty gummed up and it started uh, doing some funny stuff so I had it <clears throat> I had it rebuilt and uh, the guy that rebuilt it said it was a lot of black little specks of something um, you know some sort of trash inside plugging up the the float bowls and stuff the jets so um, I kept on changing the fuel filter and stuff but the uh, you look under there and the fuel tank is brand new pretty much, still shiny, so uh, I don't know what, something got in the tank or whatever, but that problem kind of went away. I changed the filter a couple times, like I said, and uh, that carburetor, I, I haven't touched it, it's still been, you know, still been running good. Um, like I said, the exhaust, I always, of course, 
I've always wanted to put headers on it and uh, put a better exhaust on it. Never really liked the way it sounded, but it was a get in, you know, jump in and, and drive truck. And um, that was it. I chased it around a little bit and uh, eventually, years down the line, I end up with it. And uh, at fir when I first got it, my first thoughts were... Uh, how hard is it going to be to change that front end and put the round headlights in it? And then, um, I don't know, it kind of grows on you. Some people hate it, you know. Some people don't mind it, but, um, you know, looking into a little more, you know, research on it and how rare it actually is, it's kind of um, been referred to as kind of like, you know, a unicorn truck in today's world. And, um, the thing hauls great, runs great, um, a little bit, you know, a little bit on one cab corner, um, and, you know, a couple spots on each side on the floor, maybe that big, right on both sides, uh, needs to be repaired, uh, so, you know, I'd like to do that, um. Other than that, it's pretty solid, you know, original, original 454, um, in there, original Turbo 400, um, of course, all the heavy-duty stuff underneath, it's got an oil cooler, tranny cooler, uh, big sway bar in the back, you know, uh, it's got 410 gears, um, never touched the brakes, uh, never, never had to do anything, um, Still got all four tires on the back that were on there. Uh, a couple new ones on the front. I uh, ended up getting some rims and tires, but uh, some of them were bent and out of shape. And so that's that. But you're still here watching. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. You're still watching. Well, Anyway, long video, but hey, it's Sunday afternoon. What are you going to do? I feel like I've got a win. Manifolds are off. can't believe it. It's a huge win for me. Um, that video was boring for you. You know, I'm sorry about that. But I just, you know, I figured you might want to you know, know the history of the truck. Um, I always find myself having to tell a short story about it to a lot of people. Um, small town up here, and uh, everywhere I go, you know, the gas station or, you know, something like that, um, there's always somebody young and old talking to me about the truck. Um, of course, everyone likes it, and, uh, you know, it's very weird for, um, especially people that have lived up here, you know, their entire lives. Um, years go by, and uh, these are like dinosaurs, you know. Um, these things are extinct. You don't, you don't see stuff like this up here, um, especially in the condition. Even the, the old farm truck, they, they actually... They all, people are always telling me, nice truck, the thing's in such nice shape, so solid. So weird to me because that truck is, uh, the body is real bad on that thing. Um, you know, it's all around, not, not very good condition anyway, but um, they kind of complement that truck more than this one. But um, everyone wants to talk about it, and... definitely one of those vehicles, you know, and then these days, um, you get rid of something like this, and, uh, chances are, you know, someone like me is not going to get another one, not going to have the chance, um, especially up here, you'd have to take a long ride, get something down south, or, you know, out west or something, but, um, everyone always wants to buy it, you know, my, 
my I don't want to sell it price, but you know if someone if someone walked up to me with you know <clears throat> I would say between seven and eight thousand. Usually I say eight thousand to everyone, and uh, you know you might say, man, eight thousand bucks for that. Holy shit, you're crazy. But stop and think about it because if you actually said that right now I'm going to go and I want to buy a 1980 one year only nose factory big block pretty much unmolested truck that I can get in and drive every single day and drive anywhere I want that's not all rotted out, not all crashed up and beat the shit, you know. Find try finding one, you know. And, uh, you know, if you do find something, it's going to be something you have to bid on on eBay, and you're going to have to take a ride, or you're going to have to pay a lot to have it transported to you. But uh, maybe not. Maybe you got them. Maybe they're all sitting around your town. Maybe everyone's got one sitting in the yard. You know, they ain't worth shit, you know. Uh, that's what some people say anyway. But um, anyway, you know, instead of just saying not for sale, anyone ask me, 8,000, I'd have to let it go, I'd still be sad, but I would have $8,000, and uh, I couldn't refuse that, somebody offered me that anyway, but I hope that nobody does, because I really like the truck, so, that being said, you're still there, still watching. Man. Well, well, it's getting late in the day. It's time to uh, see what's cooking. But I knew you'd keep watching. I knew it. Too bad. But at least you're there now. Never know. And you. You know. might want to take a look around, you never know, might see you.